Warning, this movie has spiders. If you are frightened by spiders, just keep in mind this is only a movie and ignore the spider on your shoulder. Made you look. Welcome to the video. Before we begin, if not already, please take a moment to subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot. And click the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload. Comment your little heart out. And most of all, please enjoy. Now back to the video. Spiders are our friends. They eat many insects that would otherwise make life on Earth miserable. In the food chain, they're up there doing a job nobody wants. So let's not villainize them too much, okay? That said, they still freak me out. I do have a slight case of arachnophobia. Which is kind of weird because every time my wife needs me to kill one, I'm John Wick, ba bow But when I'm alone and I spot one on the wall, I get goosebumps. This movie had a profound effect on me and I developed a few habits after watching this movie. And I'll share them with you tonight. This is Arachnophobia. Jerry Manley, love the name, is a photographer who just arrived in Venezuela. He's here to document the work of British entomologist James Atherton, played by Julian Sands. Proceed to tell him about how many things here are deadly, like ants, frogs, and a kiss if you really mean it. It's very deep. Just like your mom. You have to rappel down this enormous sinkhole. I don't want to see a spider web this big unless there's a bank robber in it. I don't know if this is how they really do it, but to gather specimens, they set up these funnels staked into the ground, then they start mega-vaping up into the tree canopy, then hope all the sedated or dead critters fall into the jars and out onto their heads. And it works! It, it starts raining bugs. And when we're done with them, we're making smoothies. I think it's a new species of butterfly. Yeah, it's the first of its kind, killed by man. And they hear this really big thud coming from this really big dead spider, which Atherton is certain is dead. He's a spider expert, so he should know. Turns out it's not so dead, and it jump scares into the camera, and Mr. Manley stomps it to death. This act does not go unobserved. Relax, they found a living specimen. The big spider is out for revenge and approaches the camp and hitches a ride. Later at camp, the doctor determines these spiders have no genitalia. I'm not gonna say aw. Manley's got a fever, and he's walking around everyone else. This is pre-COVID, so they make him work while sick. The big spider, and we're just gonna call it the general from now on because that's what they call him later, sneaks into Manly's tent to f him up. Hey, who's tickling me? Who's that fuzzy critter down there? And it's not the boner type spider bite. Senor. They find his body and assume the fever got to him. And they're like, damn. We don't have a jar big enough. They put that together really fast. How often do they have to build coffins for their guests? For some reason, the general decides to stow away. Silly spider. He doesn't have a passport. So they take his body all the way home to Canaima, California. His body is less than fresh, despite being hermetically sealed in his Lincoln Log coffin. The general goes outside, kills a crow, and lands in a big comfy barn. And that barn is owned by Ross Jennings, a doctor from San Francisco. He moved their family from the big city to the small town with the intention to take over a local medical office. Here you have less crime, less smog, more spiders. What? See, Ross has arachnophobia. Boy, is he in the wrong movie. Yuppie's got a yuppie. They have a huge wine collection. 127 bucks a bottle. Tasty, huh? That price, who can afford to drink it? They find a sizable spider in their stuff, but mom's not afraid of no spiders. She releases the spider into the barn, where she makes a new friend. The barn is a fury of spider boning. More sex and hairy legs than Bigfoot sex tape. He's got his hand on at least six of her knees. Well, the family settles in. I've decided to postpone retirement. Huh? Like John Williams, the town doctor is postponing retirement, leaving Ross with no practice to take over. Probably should have gotten that in writing. But you know what else he needs? A parking ticket. But at least he made one new patient, Margaret. That'll pay the mortgage. Maybe I'll get lucky and all of her systems will be ravaged by disease. For a doctor, he's dark. Love it. She's healthy, slightly high BP, but medication isn't necessary. Meanwhile, the spider family is really settling in with a giant web. Oh, hell no. Anyone else feeling itchy? 
Just to reiterate, Ross has that terrible fear of spiders. Did you get that? He freezes at the sight of spiders. Did you get that? Come on, we live in the country now. It's time to work through this irrational, paralyzing terror. It's not irrational. Screw you, lady. Molly tries to help her hubby face his arachnophobia by introducing him to the big spider web in the barn. It goes terribly. That'll teach you to grow as a person. Honey, I want a divorce. But we also learn about the pulsating, yes, pulsating egg sac. Do spider eggs really pulsate like that? Anyone in the audience knows? Comment below. Or don't. Do I want to know? The egg sac hatches, and the babies run all over the place. Our new doctor attends a party in his honor. He's here to get to know the local gossip and meet potential future spider victims. The party ends, but one unannounced guest sticks around. Can't be too sure. Margaret misses her dead husband, but on the bright side, they're about to be reunited. Ah! New fear unlocked. I can't turn on a lamp without checking under the shade. Just can't. So it looks like the offspring of the general are just as lethal, if not more. Ross is trying to install a wine rack in the basement and makes another terrifying discovery. Wood rot. Hey, to a homeowner, that's terrifying. The old doc calls it a heart attack, and Ross is partially blamed since he changed her meds. You may well have killed this lovely woman. You know, Dr. Metcalf is really a prick. I hope nothing bad happens to him. The sheriff's kind of a dick, too. But now we get to meet everyone's favorite character, Delbert the Exterminator, played to perfection by John Goodman. We wanted an entire series of Delbert movies with different bugs. We loved him that much. He's here to check the house for termites, but we know that's the least of their problems. Ross is hired to give a checkup to the high school football team. He's checking them for... <coughs> but I don't see him changing gloves between patients. There's a lot of cross-contamination going on there. One of the jocks gets a spider in the helmet and gets bitten. First down. <coughs> because of this movie, I always check headgear before I put it on. Oh, this doesn't look good for Dr. Ross, who earns the nickname Dr. Death. I wouldn't mind the nickname Dr. Death. Dr. Jennings examined him last. Again, hoping nothing bad happens to him. Did you know a spider on a treadmill gets eight times the workout? Damn! Another fear unlocked. Because of this movie, I always check my shoes before I put them on. What should I do? Where's the life insurance? They have to see that even Dr. Death isn't responsible for this one. Bitten by a spider just before he seized. And I guess there is an upside after all. So many new patients! Metcalf died with an unidentified toxin in his blood and a spider bite. And they start putting two and two together. No shit. The kids have a slumber party with a special guest. Hell, even the doll is freaking out. This is why I still love books. They're not just for reading. Dr. Ross is going over entomologists when... <laughs> not cool. I find crickets down here sometimes. And not just when a joke flops. The general's been throwing that spider dick around and brings home another pregnant spider. Dr. Ross reaches out to Dr. Atherton since he's the best entomologist around. Can I, ma? But still not interested enough to come himself, so he sends an intern, Chris Collins. Not to be confused with Chris Collins. He's just in time for the exhumation and autopsies. And this is out in the country, they're probably gonna feed him afterwards. Damn it, Hollywood. Stop making coroners eat while working. It's just gross. But it's confirmed, all three Vicks have spider bites. They need a specimen to examine so they go to Margaret's house. Yeah, help yourself, Lloyd. Remember when you would read the cereal box at the table? Remember when they still had prizes inside? Oh! Every box comes with a dead spider. Ugh. More fears unlocked. Showers and shits should be safe places, man. This is why I never use a toilet in the dark or shower without my eyes open. It makes shampooing unpleasant, but it's a small price to pay. Enough with all this teasing. <gasps> they do finally find a living specimen. You're gonna be dissected. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. It's been too long since the Delbert scene. He's got organic, environmentally friendly insecticide, which also appears to be spider friendly insecticide. I got your organic solution right here. <laughs> Dr. Atherton graces them with his presence now that a genuine threat has been established. Now he remembers Mr. Manley. Manley the photographer. 
and they figured a spider hitched a ride in Manley's coffin from Venezuela and used him as a Capri Sun for the whole ride. The fangs, the injectors are disproportionately large. Thank you, I work out. They test the venom on a mouse. It's super effective. No sex organs. It's cold in here, all right? Somehow that South American male has mated with a domestic house spider. He just wanted a green card. No sex organs makes them drones, something not seen in spiders. But Dr. Atherton did see this in Venezuela, so that confirms it. These soldier spiders are offspring. The good news is they probably have a short lifespan and will die off soon. And now the bad news. They will eventually produce reproductive offspring, and that means more spiders f Meanwhile, the coroner and his wife are about to enjoy Wheel of Fortune. Yet another fear unlocked. I can't eat popcorn without looking at it first, even in a dark movie theater. I just can't blindly stuff my face. Well, looks like the coroner needs a coroner. Molly's been photographing stuff all around the house and hanging it up as art in the doctor's office. Where is this? It's your Daniel's place. Which Atherton recognizes as the general's base of operations. But Dr. Atherton investigates it by himself. He goes right up to the big web, which is full of dead rats, massive red flags. So rather than torch the place, he knocks. Stop this ready. Come and get it. Why would he do that? They check a map and plot out the spider attacks. Guess whose house is dead center? Well, who the hell lives here? I do. They arrive and Delbert breaks out the good stuff to take out the nest. He starts spraying spiders with his chemicals that just incinerates the critters. Where can I get that stuff? Asking for a friend. He also finds Atherton's body covered in webs and crawling with spiders. Ugh. Dr. Ross comes home, not exactly acting cool. Before he can get the family out the door, spiders start pouring out of every dark crevice. They swarm and it's triggering. They can't go out the front door, but for some reason going upstairs to go out the bathroom window onto the roof is safer? Oh yeah, this is much better. The family gets out the window, but Ross is blocked, so he takes another route. Delbert arrives and starts laying waste to the spiders. Rock and roll. I would have liked to have seen more of this. Ross runs through the house. Spiders are dropping all, all over him. How he doesn't get bitten, I don't know. But he falls over the top of the stairs and hits the ground floor. And remember all that wood rot? This will tank the resale value. He seems to be safe down here. It's dark, warm, moist, and most of all, dramatically lit. Everything a big pulsating sack needs, which the queen comes out ready to defend. He can't get out of the cellar because of the big padlock he installed to protect his wine. So he's got to fight the queen and he throws her into a fuse panel. Dead. He finds the egg sack, pulsating and ready to pop, ladies. But before he can do anything about it, the general appears. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the general and save some time! Ross gets trapped under an improperly anchored wine rack and the general slowly stalks him. Ross manages to knock the general away, but he keeps coming. He starts lobbing wine bottles at him. He's either going to kill the general or give him a drinking problem. He frees himself and he tries to spray paint flamethrower trick. The general leaps out of a vent like a spider John McClane and knocks Ross down again. And this time he's paralyzed with fear and the general is crawling up his body. <laughs> You're a terminated fucker. <laughs> and Venezuelan spiders must be gangster as hell because the general runs out screaming while on fire. But Ross also has one of those nail guns, the kind that uses a bullet, and fires the general into the egg sack, which sets it all on fire. Die, spider babies. Thank God. <laughs> Don't mention it. Ross and the fam move back to San Francisco, where the spiders are less lethal, but the fault lines are not. That was arachnophobia. I always liked Jeff Daniels. He's got range. Giving him a paralyzing fear of the movie's monster really puts us in his shoes. I'm also reminded of the recent death of Julian Sands. I liked the authority and confidence he carried himself with, right up to the egotistical flaws he carried with him. One of my all-time favorite actors, and I'll miss him. Are the spiders the bad guy, or are they just spiders being spiders? Is the true villain Ross's arachnophobia itself? 
I kind of wish more townsfolk were killed by the spiders. The stakes don't feel nearly high enough by the end, and the deaths seem confined to a few acres. Kingdom of the Spiders ended with the entire town covered in webs. Now that was an ending. This was mainly a comedy, so I get needing to keep the tone from going too dark. Real spiders were used, none were harmed, they say, with puppets, rubber props, and other tricks to sell the little beasties. Kudos to the cast for working with actual spiders. I couldn't do that. But the standout performance once again goes to John Goodman. For a relatively small part, John Goodman stole this show. His character is hilarious and low-key badass. Every line is gold. I'm telling you, Delbert needed his own movie. Yeah, that's right. I'm bad. You sure are, sir. You sure are. Let's just say this movie lives up to its title. Arachnophobia is 4Bs, a fun old-fashioned nature horror movie with a comic sensibility that's not afraid to give you the willies. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment the bell. You know, the usual YouTube stuff. This is The Newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles! <laughs>